Hi there, my name is Keith Williams and I'm here to share some tips on how to play in a tenor clef on cello. Um, a tenor clef is something that um, tends to confuse and annoy people the first time they see it because why do we need another clef? In cello, as you know, we, we play with three clefs. We play with a bass clef, with the treble clef, but also with this other clef that's sort of in between that we call tenor clef. Why do we have that clef? So this little brief video is to give you an idea of how to use the tenor clef and to show you just how easy it is to play in tenor clef. What you need to be prepared for this is to be able to play a simple, let's say, D major scale on your D string, on the D string. Okay, so let's just do that. So the, how do we set up a, a D major scale on the D string? First of all, you could just set up a unison between the G string and your fourth finger over there, or something like that, if that's how you like to play it. And the open string is, of course, a D. And then comes E, F sharp, G. And then we go to fourth position, like this, and play A. And extend to the second finger. Pick up the C sharp there. And end on a D. And we can check how good we are with, with the harmonic. I'm just plucking here to make life easy. OK? So if you can play that, you can play tenor clef very, very simply, because all we're going to do is take those exact same fingerings and just move them over to the next string, over. And we're going to pretend that we're playing on this string when, in fact, we're playing on a higher string. That's all tenor clef is. Okay, so let's take a look at, um, I'm going to write out a couple of notes here and show you exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so what I've done here is I've written out the same notes in the left-hand column and in the right-hand column. So with the bass clef, we would write an A like this. This would be the open top string on your cello. That exact same note is written this way in tenor clef. Don't believe me? Let's click and listen. OK, next note. OK, so the left-hand column and the right-hand column are the exact same musical notes, just written in different clefs. Now, take a close look at those notes, and what you'll notice very quickly it, that, is that there's a fifth in between. If, just imagine that this is written in the bass clef. There's a fifth between this and this, OK? And that's your big hint as to what the tenor clef is there for. Actually, if you can pretend that this is not tenor clef, if you can just imagine that this is bass clef, but you play it on the next string over, namely the A string, you will in fact get this. Notice that on the D string, the open D would then correspond to the open A. Okay, So if you can imagine that you're playing on the D string, but actually play on the A string, then you are playing in tenor clef. Now, it doesn't look terribly useful when you're looking at these kind of lower notes, but let's look at some higher ones, and then you can see that, in fact, the tenor clef saves you some real estate. You don't have to write so many lines. Let's look, for example, at these notes. If we write those notes in the tenor clef, they sound, of course, exactly the same. But we don't have to go as high up. So that's pretty handy. Um, it makes things a little bit easier to read, um, and it gives us some extra overlap um, that we can use, that we can exploit with the bass clef and with the treble clef. Um, so you don't have to leap all the way from the bass clef up to the to the treble clef. The, the tenor clef is actually a very useful clef to use. The only part of the tenor clef that I find really confusing sometimes is whenever notes are written, rather low notes are written in the tenor clef. But let's take a look at one instructive example. Again, these are the same notes on the in the left-hand column and on the right-hand column. This is a G. And this is a, the same exact note, G, written in tenor clef. Notice that this, if this were a bass clef, this would be a low C. So again, what's going on here is you're simply playing um, the, as if this were bass clef, but on the next string over as if this were the G string. So it's really pretty straightforward. So again, just to recap, if you can play um, in bass clef on the D string, then you can easily, easily play in tenor clef on the A string. 
and that will enable you to go quite a lot further and have um, be able to write things a little bit more economically and be able to read a little bit easier. Um, let's just take another look at that. So let's imagine again that we're playing a D major scale. And all we're going to do is move our fingers without doing much at all, just simply move it over to the left hand side here and play the exact same thing on the A string. And lo and behold, um, now you're playing tenor clef. Um, now, there are a couple of caveats, I would say, some things to watch out for. Number one, if you simply use this as a hack to read the notes um, without actually learning the note names, that can set you up for some real problems later on. So I would continue the habit that you probably already have of calling out the notes as you play them. Uh, when you practice. So for example, we go D, E, F sharp, G. When you do that, that playing the for the tenor clef, at least for the first couple of weeks or months that you're using tenor clef, I think it's a really good idea to go ahead and, and, and um, pronounce the notes out loud, say you know, A, B, C sharp, etc. And, um, and keep doing that until you can actually recognize the note names. Otherwise, um, you could be playing in a tenor clef without actually knowing which notes you're playing. It sounds ridiculous, but when you get up to notes up here, it's really going to matter. Um, and tenor clef is most useful, really, when you're moving beyond fourth position on the A string. You start to get into fifth, and sixth, etc., that kind of thing. That's when the tenor clef is really, really useful. So um, it, it really makes sense to, to, to do some scales and call out the notes as you go. So you build up some proficiency. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Um, enjoy and let me know if there are any questions.